I'm here with Mark Foster, and he flew in this plane behind us. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yep, what you see behind us here is a, a World War II advanced trainer called a T-6 Texan. Um, tell you all sorts of stuff about it, but the, but the basic of the airplane is uh, this is the airplane that was used to train in an advanced way the pilots who would ultimately fly like P-51 Mustangs and Corsairs and B-25s and B-17s. So this is the airplane that they really honed their skills on before they went on and got checked out into the airplane that was going to go flight, you know, fight, uh, fly and fight overseas. Okay, so can we have a walk around? Well, certainly, let's do it. Okay, so we're standing in front of the North American T6 Texan here. It's powered by a Pratt & Whitney. It's a, it's a radial engine, it's a nine-cylinder radial engine, produces about 600 horsepower, and drives this rather large propeller here, which is a, a Hamilton Standard propeller, one of the, the main uh, manufacturers of propellers during World War II. And this, uh, this engine will propel the airplane to like about a cruise speed of maybe about 140 knots or so, but very dependable. In fact, Pratt & Whitney, uh, their, their slogan was dependable engine. So it's, uh, it's a great engine to have on the front of an airplane. So now we're under the, uh, the T6 Texan here. You can kind of see it's got a, a rather narrow landing gear uh, by some airplanes, but, but kind of wider than others. Uh, the airplane was a little tricky uh, for takeoff and landing, and that's what made the airplane such a great trainer, um, because if you could land this airplane proficiently, then you could fly a P-51 Mustang or an F4U Corsair or any of those type of airplanes. So that was kind of the idea behind, behind the North American T-6 Texan. So now we're back here in front of the uh, the T6, and a little bit of background on what what a T6 really is. You know, uh, mentioned before, it's an advanced trainer, World War II, but you know they used them from World War II through Korea, and they actually used them in some counterinsurgency missions. So they they were armed at times and uh, and flew against uh, on the front lines and behind enemy lines. So it's a pretty interesting airplane when you think of it from that aspect. Okay, what you're looking at here at the back of the T6 is the fabric covered control surfaces, which was uh, pretty common during World War II. So you see that uh, you got aluminum for the structure and then the control surfaces are an aluminum frame with a fabric covering. And you'll also note that the, the, there's a tail wheel on this airplane. Some airplanes are, are have nose, nose gear uh, wheels and some have tail wheels. So we call this conventional gear. This is how airplanes were originally designed. And these are a little more tricky to fly. And the reason for that is the center of gravity is behind the main gear. So if you take a dart, picture taking a dart and throwing it at a dart board, but throwing it backwards. So the, the heavy end always wants to come around and get in the front. So when you fly a tail wheel airplane, you're constantly coaxing the tail to uh, stay behind you. Just looking at the side of the airplane here, as you can see, we have it in U.S. Navy markings. So this was uh, used to train naval aviators during World War II and towards the end of the war. Um, the national insignia you see on the side, the star and bar, uh, that's uh, mid-war to late war is the, the configuration they had there. Uh, early on, they had kind of a red stripe around it, so you know that this is the later period of World War II. And, and again, you'll see it says SNJ-6, which uh, SNJ, was what the Navy referred to the T6 Texan as, so that's why it says SNJ there being a Navy markings. You can see here with the uh, the cockpit configuration on the T6 Texan, um, front cockpit is typically where the student would fly or uh, the pilot in command of mission that like forward air control mission or any of the other missions that were flown, the instructor would be sitting in the back or as a passenger an observer during let's say the Korean Air War when they were using them as forward air controllers. The T6 Texan, that's kind of a generic term for all these. Uh, some were SNJs, which is what the Navy designated them, and then the, the Harvards, which uh, uh, the Royal Air Force used. So they've got different names, but T-6 is somewhat of a generic name. Uh, about a 42-foot wingspan from tip to tip, so that's kind of give you a good proportion there. And uh, and then manufactured, this particular airplane was manufactured in April 15th, 1945, and went to uh, the Pensacola area and was trained training naval aviators uh, right at the end of the war and then, then beyond uh, World War II, of course. Um, it is now operated by Lion Air Museum at John Wayne Airport in Southern California, and the museum uh, has uh, on display some, some great World War II, Korea, and Vietnam artifacts and aircraft and automobiles. And probably the highlight of the museum is we have a lot of volunteer docents. We have about 80 of them uh, on our total staff, and at any given time, maybe half a dozen in the museum providing uh, tours. So you get to learn a lot about this particular airplane, the T-6, and then all the other airplanes we have, like the B-17 Flying Fortress, the C-47, uh, the cargo plane, 
B25 Mitchell, A26 Invader. We got a, a forward air control 01 Bird Dog Vietnam Vintage. So we got some pretty good uh, 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 cars and airplanes to come check out at Lion Air Museum.